but these two boxes of Rallyman are jam-packed with possibilities, and it's my intention to highlight all of the interesting things you can do with them. This is Shakedown. In today's Shakedown, we're going to try and make a three-stage Rallyman game feel a little more like a three-day rally event, just by changing up what kind of stages we race across. Here in WRC7, a rally weekend has between one and three stages for us to tackle each day before we're back into the service area to repair any damage and get ready for the next day's action. There are three different kinds of stages on display at this weekend's Rally Australia. We start with an epic stage, or an endurance stage, I've never actually checked which one it is, but it's basically the longest stage of the rally, tens of kilometres in length, and it'll be the only stage you do that day before returning for any repairs. On day two are three stages, two of which are your typical small stages, five to ten kilometres in length, and are basically what you'd find in the Rallyman Dirt rulebook. They are the bulk of a rally weekend, but our first stage is special. It's super special, being a super special stage. These stages are showcases of the cars in front of the crowds, and if they're not held on a racing circuit, then they're often held in the middle of town, right through the city streets. In this case, we've got a couple of laps around a small circuit, but in other super specials, we could be going head to head against another driver on crossover tracks that you'll be familiar with from the likes of the Race of Champions. Our tyre choice on day two will have to take all of these stages into account, so a short tarmac super special probably won't be as high a priority as the regular gravel stages. And again, at the end of these three stages, we've got a chance for repairs before the third and final day. That last day has a couple more regular stages, which we'll be familiar with by now, as, just like a regular rally, we'll be going over stages multiple times, testing our skills against changing weather, time of day, or grip levels on a surface that is getting competitively driven over again and again. But the last stage of the day is the power stage, where bonus championship points are awarded for the fastest times. Even if your rally as a whole hasn't gone right, you might be able to make up some points on your rivals with a fast power stage. I'm sure you can see how we can adapt these stages into Rallyman. I'm not going to do six stages today, but I am going to have a go on those three types of stage, starting with an epic stage from Bart's Dirt Rally 2 roadbook, Chandler's Creek being the longest Australian stage. We'll get the chance to make use of the assistance tile at the end of the stage to repair any damage we picked up, and it also serves as an opportunity to swap out our tyres before we head on to the next day of racing, which starts with a super special. This two lap course is based on the Coffs Super Special and we'll hopefully get around it in no time at all and in one piece before we head back out into the countryside for the power stage and back into Bart's roadbook where we'll be racing through half of Taylor Farm. Why only half? Well, it's partly to make the epic stage look longer, but it's mostly because there's nothing stopping us from chopping up stages or running them in reverse. It's an easy way to get so much more out of each stage and still challenge yourself by going over tiles you think you know. Being a power stage, whoever gets through in the fastest time will take home five extra championship points. Who are fighting for those championship points? Well, it's just a couple of Dr. Worms NPCs today. I'm going to set one at difficulty seven and the other at difficulty three, and hopefully that'll show you what kind of difference you'll get out of the system before you think about the many driver traits. Also new to our use of these NPCs are the fact that they're going to generate focus tokens, not for securing dice, but for lowering their stage times. We're all in R6s today, and the best tyre for the stages ahead is probably gravel. But maybe you'll think differently, and I encourage you to put these times to shame. Let's see how we do. We have randomly chosen the turn order. Uh, opening the stage today is the difficulty 7 NPC. We are at the back. We can learn from the mistakes of the NPCs, should they make any. And we'll see who has the fastest time at the end of this epic stage. Uh, we are all on gravel tyres. It makes the most sense for this setup. And we're just going to take things away with the difficulty 7 NPC. So it is leading the rally, which means it is on the leader dice. Uh, and what we do is check for a loss of control as normal. Uh, it hasn't lost control. And then we re-roll the highest two gear dice that show hazards. And then whatever is left is the dice pool that we have to work with. So we are going to set the orange car up for heading into the um, first hairpin. It won't have enough dice to get around it, so it is going to maximize its speed and end there in fifth gear. And then once it has done its move, you're going to uh, get focus tokens for the amount of unused dice, coast or gear, that do not show hazards. So in this case, we have two unused dice 
uh, that don't show hazards, two focus, two seconds for the orange car. That is going to happen again because it is taking its second turn. Uh, it has not lost control and we're going to re-roll a couple of dice and then we have all of these dice to work with. So first of all it has to break down to gear three in order to uh, drift around the outside and then I think that it can set itself up for the next turn by ending there in gear six. It keeps its time down and it also gets a couple of focus tokens, another two seconds off the clock at the end of its run. But before that happens, we need to set the green car off. Uh, again, check for loss of control. The difficulty three NPCs are going to re-roll the highest two gear dice that do not show hazards. So, of course, it's going to make them more likely to um, have hazards come up. In this case, it hasn't. Um, it can do pretty much exactly the same as the orange car. So I will just put it there in the same space as we get three focus tokens for not using the two coast die and the gear six die. We move back to the orange car who has to navigate some low speed corners and it is in gear six. So we haven't lost control, though we were close to it. We're going to re-roll the highest two that show hazards. And that is what we've got to work with. So from gear six, we are definitely going to have to drop down to gear four in order to come into gear three, first hazard. In fact, that will be the only hazard of its uh, turn. Um, does it want to end in gear three on that corner or does it do what I would usually do, which probably means something silly, and drop down towards gear one so that it can better get out of the corner, the whole distance versus speed aspect of Rallyman. Uh, that is what I would do in that situation. So I'm going to do that for this NPC. Two more focus for the orange car. Green car is going to not lose control and it's going to have a fair few dice to work with. Uh, so it can break down to gear three. However, that's two hazards right there. So um, it can only get up to gear five uh, before it would have to place a third hazard on gear six as it comes out of the hairpin a little slower than it wants to. And it has allowed us to get onto the start line and see what the best course of action is. Um, again, I think uh, the one, two, three, four, five up to that final space before the hairpin is the best course of action. So I'm just gonna roll those flat out and hope for the best. We get two hazards on the two and the three. So that will generate us five focus tokens for the next few turns. Of course, we're the only person who can use them to secure dice going forward. And then we are straight into the orange car's turn. It's going to want to accelerate out of this corner. Uh, it hasn't lost control. It's going to re-roll the highest two dice that show hazards. There is a gear three, gear four corner coming up. I am, um, can it get through that? Let's assume it can. Um, although I am not sure. No, I think it's going to have to go up to gear four like that in order to stay on the corner in as high a gear as it can. There are two unused gear dice for its seconds at the end of the stage. The green car is in gear five and it's going to be re-rolling. Oh, first of all, it's going to lose control. So the two, the three and the four on the um, dice are hazards. So at the end of this turn, it will lose control. And then the highest uh, two gear dice that don't show hazards, in this case, there's only one, um, will be re-rolled. 
So it has secured a hazard on every single one of its gears. Uh, the two coast die are fine, and at the end of his turn, it's going to lose control. So it doesn't know it's going to lose control, so it will plan out its move as best it can. Uh, so it is in gear five, and it has a gear three corner coming up. So it would have wanted to probably coast and then break down to gear three. And then coast out. Um, in fact, if we put that there and then put the gear five there, that would mean that it could come out in gear four, at which point it would realize that it has lost control. Not an ideal gear to lose control in, but that's the way rallying works. Minus one gear token going forward will uh, affect its time somewhat. So it has not had a good turn and we are bearing down upon it. So um, we are probably gonna follow suit with the strategy of these driverless cars. We want to get up the gears in order to maximize our time. So I'm gonna roll those. Um, I am not going to roll those flat out. That's a bit of a risk. Um, so we will see how far we get. Um, I bet I could have though. Yep. Um, only the one hazard on the six. So we have drifted around the corner. Next up is the orange car. Uh, check for loss of control. There is none. We're going to re-roll the hazards. It has a full set of dice to work with, but it's coming up to some slow hairpins. It wants to maintain gear four through the corner. Um, if we go three, two, uh, one, and then coast, again, it will end turn in gear one, but on this occasion it has some more focus from unused dice. Behind it then is the difficulty three car back on the track uh, just ahead of us. Uh, they are not losing control, but they are going to re-roll these two dice to see what their final dice pool is. Uh, they're in gear zero, so they can start things off with gear one into a gear two, up to a gear three. Now, uh, they don't want to place the coast dice because those are hazards, and they can't get all the way up to gear six because that is also a hazard. So they will be able to get to gear five by doing that. They don't get any focus tokens for their leftover dice. They have rolled too many hazards. And hopefully you can see already what the difference between the difficulties are. We are in gear six. So we have to again break down to gear four in order to get into the corner. Uh, we have to go the long way around for uh, reasons. Um, we're going to drop to gear two and then into gear one. Um, knowing that the orange car has done it, I might want to change the strategy and end in gear three. And I might even roll that flat out in order to try and get some focus. That was a good clean roll as we take things the long way. Four focus tokens for our efforts. The orange car is not losing control and there are no hazards for it to re-roll. It is in gear one, so it's probably going to stay there. Uh, its coast die are not looking too helpful. Um, it wants to go up through the gears, I'd imagine. And it has a couple of coasts to work with, but uh, knowing that it's a gear two corner coming up, it does not want to be in gear six. So it is going to end its turn there, I think, and set itself up for the back half of the course. The green car has gear damage, hasn't lost control. It's going to re-roll the highest two dice that don't show hazards. We're in gear five. Um, we want to 
drop down to my gear three for maximizing the um, finishing gear perhaps. Uh, if we end in five on the end of this tile, that might allow enough room to break down and it would also keep up a little bit of time. Um, it would also give three focus to the green car. I think that's the best course of action. I'm not going to think too long and hard. We have a lot of rallying ahead of us. And then we have the opportunity from gear three, as I say, to drop down to gear one in order to get as high through the gears as we can. I think getting up to gear six, in fact, we can even make use of the long space there. I don't see a better way of doing things and we do have the brake to get down to gear four to make it through the corner on the next turn. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go one by one. Uh, there is hazard on the one and hazard on the two. I'm going to risk the three because it's in my hand and I was shaking it. Uh, and then it will cost six focus in order to secure those dice. So that's most of our focus pool gone. Hopefully that was the right call to make. So let's see what the orange car can do. Uh, it hasn't lost control. It's going to re-roll its gear six, but it doesn't change the results. So a couple of hazards again on its um, coast die. It can break down to gear four and indeed must at some point because it needs to go down to gear three into gear two, uses its second coast in um, gear two for its second hazard, sorry. Uh, and then it can come out in gear one, ends its turn slowly, but makes progress down the track. As we see what the green car can do. And it hasn't lost control. It is going to reroll a couple of dice, get a couple more hazards. I think four, three, uh, breaking down to one would be its first uh, hazard. Coasting, coasting was its second hazard, and then coming out in gear two, navigating the entire double hairpin in some style. We're in gear six, we have to break down to gear four in order to tackle the corner. We're going to drift around it. Do we want to slide to a stop? That is what I would normally do. And that would be something like three, two, one. I think with the way the corners are set up, we can easily get through with a straight run on our next turn. So I want to do something like that. Um, I am going to risk flat out. Um, most of these dice are safe uh, as we get six more focus for the focus pool. So the focus that we spent have come back to us. Uh, maybe we will be able to use them for time instead of dice in future. The orange car is in gear one. Let's see what it can do. Uh, it has not lost control, although it came close to it. And it has a fair few dice to work with. There is another slow hairpin at the end of this run. Uh, so it wants to be in maybe gear six here. Um, so can we engineer that? I think we can. Um, there will be a couple of hazards but not enough to lose control. So it can do a run like that and it would get two focus back for unused dice. Uh, the green car, uh, it has not lost control, but there are not many gear dice for it to make use of from its starting gear of gear two. So it wants to maximize its distance to try and get away from me, I think. 
in which case it will get all the way up to gear four before it has to stop because of the gear two corner coming up. What can we do behind it? We are in gear one. We are going to make use of the coast die to get out of the double hairpin. And then we can get all the way up to gear six. But we don't want to be in gear six there. We want to be in gear six a space earlier, really. So we're going to shuffle these dice back and set ourselves up for slowing down into the corner like the orange car did. Uh, I am not going to roll those flat out. We have enough focus to pay for things should they get risky. And I'm going to spend one focus to secure the gear six. And that will get us down a little bit of the track in just 10 seconds. The orange car then will be wanting to break down into a low gear for the upcoming corner and it can do that. It's going to be in fourth gear there, third gear there, second gear for the uh, hairpin and then it's not going to make use of the gear one die so that it can uh, get a little bit more focus for its stage time and then we have the green car ahead of us. Will we end up overtaking it? We shall find out. It has not lost control and it's going to re-roll those dice to get a couple more hazards. So it is in gear four. It's going to break down to gear two and it's going to do that successfully. Um, it can coast that far. And then it can go into a drift in gear three. I think it might end up blocking us a little bit. We're in gear six. We want to break down to gear four to make sure we can make the corner. Uh, again, we're going to go the long way. Uh, we can end there in second gear. We don't need to drop down to gear one. So I'm going to roll those flat out and hopefully generate some more focus. Five more focus as we come up behind the green car, waiting for it to get out of the way. We are set for um, a good finish, I hope, as the orange car probably does finish its um, stage on this turn. It is in gear two. Uh, it has not lost control going over the finish line and it has lots of dice to work with. So the fastest that it can get up to gear six is what it wants to do. It can do just that. It's going to finish the course, the epic stage in gear six. It's going to get another two focus for its stage time, which I will calculate after we have all finished. So it is in the assistance waiting for the results. Uh, we just have the green car and us to go. We have been catching up with the green car quite a lot, uh, especially when it rolls so badly on its dice. It is in a gear three corner in third gear. So it's going to carry on uh, with its drift. And then I think it's going to come out into as high a gear as it can, which is all the way up to gear six. And that has also earned it just the one focus for its unused dice. So behind it, what can we do? Uh, we might be able to overtake it in gear six. Let's work out if we can. Um, and then we'll work out if it's wise to do so. Uh, we definitely can. Um, we can also, because we don't have position until we do overtake it, we can put a coast die there and then make use of the sliding spaces to break down for the hairpin. So that will give us the turn order against green and that will stop it from uh, clogging up the corner ahead of us, provided we get there with our dice. So let's roll these one by one. Two is good. The 
three is good. Four and the five, five was a hazard. Six is good, so we are good to overtake the green car as we make use of the long straight and end in gear six over here. So it is our turn again. We have to come to a stop at some point. We are going to drop down to gear four, then into gear three, then into gear two, and we're going to coast around the outside. Again, we're going to keep our uh, gear up. So we're not going to drop to gear one. Uh, we could risk going flat out on those dice. Um, I don't think it's wise, but with that roll, we are in gear two at the end of our turn. And behind us is the green car, who we are now blocking. Uh, they have not lost control, but they don't have a lot of dice to work with. So they are in gear six. They want to break down to gear four. And if they are maximizing their moves without um, running into a hazard, then they can only get into gear three at the start of the hairpin. Dropping down to gear two would be their uh, final hazard. Two focus for unused dice. The next turn, and it's probably going to be our final turn, as we do much the same as the um, orange car ahead of us. We try to get gear six as fast as we can. Um, I want to also make it as safe as possible, um, which means putting in some coast diet. Um, if I make use of the uh, sliding space, I can eke out an extra focus. Uh, is it worth the risk? Hopefully we can crash over the finish line if we take that risk and it results in a loss of control. My dice have been good so far. And they continue to be good. Two hazards at the end of that roll, but we cross the finish line in gear six. Can the green car make up for its performance? Uh, it has not lost control, but it came close to it. It's not going to get very far. If it drops down to gear one in order to take the hairpin as soon as it can, it can then coast and then come into gear two. So that is the best that it can do. Anything else would be its third hazard for the turn. And it has just the one unused gear dice that doesn't show a hazard. It has another turn to try and get across the line. Uh, it's rolled much better this time, but we do still have to roll the highest two gears that don't show hazards. And it is in gear two, so hopefully it can get all the way up through the gears to finish in gear six. Yes, it can. So it will finish in gear six, and it does earn three focus for its uh, unused dice as it crosses the line into third place on the road. Is it third place on the stage times? We are going to find out as we get set up for the next day of rallying. It has taken me three minutes and 20 to get around Chandler's Creek, and I think I have to owe that time to learning from the mistakes of the orange NPC. 3 minutes 45 on our time cards, 25 focus tokens left over to reduce the final stage time. The difficulty 7 orange NPC finished in 4.25 with 19 focus for a stage time of 4 minutes and 6 seconds. And the easy difficulty 3 NPC, our little green friend, finished in 5 minutes minus 16 focus when he was able to generate some on his turns for a stage time of 4 minutes 44. We now lead the rally and therefore the turn order into the Coffs Super Special. But what tyres are we going to make use of knowing that there isn't another assistance window to change tyres and repair damage before the final power stage? I have decided to go onto the asphalt tyres for the next two stages. My reasoning is that uh, even though this looks like a small Super Special, we will actually be doing uh, more tiles on asphalt than we will on gravel. 
Uh, the only drawback to them is that when we go onto the gravel, I will be rolling the leader dice no matter what. However, I've got my full six gears, two coast and one break and three hazards for this two lap event around the Coffs Super Special. So let's get straight into it. Um, the other cars won't be following us until we finish. So they're going to have to remember our strategy uh, as best they can. Uh, and we are going to have to plan carefully what we're going to do. So I'm going to um, head up to fifth gear and then we'll be able to break down into the drift spaces around the next corner in gear five. Um, so I'm going to do that. I like to go flat out at the start of runs. This is a risky one. Um, with four hazards, it was too risky. So our lead is already uh, in trouble as we go into a crash on the first turn. That will be in gear four in an orange space. That will be a two damage pull turn. We've got a green flag and we've got a minus one gear. Not the best of starts. We are going to go into the corner then the quick way. We're going to go through in gear one. We're going to go up to gear two. That will allow us through the corner in gear three and then we can come out in I would say we could come out in gear four but then we would have to go the long way around the corner uh, but it will hopefully um, keep our time low because we've already spent a minute showboating in front of the crowds uh, I will go flat out on these because I think they will roll better they do we get another six focus and we end our turn this time successfully in gear four. On this turn, we have to break down to gear two, but we've got to go around the outside because we don't have enough brakes to drop into gear one. Um, that will mean that we either keep our speed in gear three, uh, or we can coast and drop into gear one, which will put us on the corner for a straight run through the next part of the course. I am thinking of doing that because we can at least go flat out on that, hope to generate a bit more focus in order to not crash in future. That's another four focus, but it is another 50 seconds. Okay, we've got a massive focus pull now and we have a jump coming up that we can't make use of. So we will instead uh, try to make it through this chicane with a gear two limit and then come for a strong showing into the corner. Um, we can only go up to gear four. Gear four is the uh, gear that will allow us to break into that corner. So we will be um, finishing like that. Ooh, I'd like to go flat out. I keep looking at all these ones, twos and coast thinking that it's safe. Uh, so hopefully it will be. Uh, and on this occasion it is. Our times Dropping down with all this focus it will be useful to try and offset the minute that it took on our first turn. On this turn, we're not going over the finish line. We have to come around the hay bale and through the water hazard. So in gear four, can we manage it? We can break down to gear two. That'll put us there. We can come through into gear three here uh, and then we'll have to break down to gear one at the start of our next turn that seems good to me uh, again there's not many dice so i will go flat out no loss of control just the one hazard and we have a gear three time card to add to the pile right we are coming through for the first lap 
we need to drop down to gear one and then we need to coast through the water hazard and I would like to get up to as high a speed as we can. Again, I want to end in gear five successfully this time. So, um, oh, in fact, we can't with the way that the gears are. So we're going to have to end in fourth. Um, I think that's the best we can do. Uh, this time I will go one by one. Something about this situation is threatening to me. Uh, the gear one showing a hazard is not the best of starts, but it was the only hazard of the turn. We have set ourselves up for uh, another dart through these two corners in gear two. Uh, if we do that, that will allow us once more to go into gear four at this point. I will probably go flat out on those. Why not? Uh, two hazards might be why not. We get another five focus for our efforts and we need to break down to gear two. And once again, we can coast through and end in first gear. And we will roll those flat out. So we get even more focus to offset our bad first turn. That's another four focus, but it is another 50 seconds to get around the corner. So maybe we should have kept our speed up and ended uh, in gear three in the middle. Uh, this might come back to haunt us. We're in gear one. Once again, we can't make use of the jump, but we are able to go all the way through the gears, through the um, chicane, and then into gear four before the tricky corner. Again, I'm going to go flat out. We are getting into quite the rhythm with this um, stage we've got another six focus and this time we are hoping to go through the finish line we have to break down to gear two uh, i'd like to get there in gear six if i can i do actually have six gears in this car not that we've seen them being used um that's what i'm going to do i'm going to roll those one by one uh, to make sure I get over there without any fuss, which we have done. We end in gear six and we will work out our stage time before the next uh, gravel section. But now it is the time of the orange NPC. In contrast to us, the um, orange R6 has gone onto the soft asphalt tires. So that means that it has more hazards to play with as the stage goes on, but its tires will wear out down to a riskier two hazard per turn limit. Uh, but the orange car is thinking ahead because on the gravel section, these tires are actually better than the tires I'm on. So it thinks that over the course of these two stages, it can get a better time overall than us. And that is, of course, what matters in the end. So we're going to see what it can do. It's going to start the stage in gear five, like I planned to do. We do need to break down to gear three in order to take that corner, coast through, drop down to gear two and end here in gear two. Come through, can end its turn in gear three. Learning from our mistakes, perhaps. We have aged its tires. We still have four hazards before losing control, but this is the last turn where that will be true. Can we make use of that jump? That is probably where it's going to make up all the time. We have to drop down to gear two. It's only going to get to gear four. However, it's aging its tires. Will that be a factor? It has to break down to gear two once more. So it's going to do what we did. Last lap, its tires are down to nothing. So they are two hazards before losing control on um, these tires. 
And given that this is a difficult NPC, there aren't many hazards that are rolled that we can't end up placing. So this was probably a great tyre choice for the orange car. It can go up to gear four. It's rolled worse on that one. It can drop down to gear two. Can it get into third? Yes. Bit of a compromised turn, perhaps, thanks to rolling a few more hazards than it intended. It can break down to gear one. Then it can go up to gear two and into gear three. Again, can it make use of the jump? Not on this occasion because the gear four die is a hazard. So putting a hazard onto a track feature for an NPC would mean that it is two hazards. So it's going to end there in third gear. Uh, the highest it can be for the upcoming corner is gear four. And this will probably be its last turn as it tries to cross the finish line it needs to break down to two that was its first hazard i can't get up to four unless i first get up to three and then we can cross over the line in gear six and we will see whether that was a good time or not for the orange npc last up is the green car and they have decided to stick with their gravel tires which means that on this super special they are rolling only five um, gear dice and two white coast dice they have no brakes and they have not got a whole lot to work with now they've got no brakes so the best they can end in is fourth coast through in third drop to second and then come out in first maybe this was a strategy that the rest of us were missing um, as we come into third and then over the jump in fourth lots of dice to work with but they have forgotten that they don't have brakes they get minus one gear as they smack into the hay bale uh, not the end of the world one coast coast two three that is not a good set of dice to roll. They can't make it to the uh, water hazard. Oh, not looking too good as they finish the first lap. Hopefully their next lap will be better. They can get up to fourth gear. They need to be in third gear in order to get through the corner. They can then drop down to second gear. They can end in gear one. They have lots of hazards on these low gears. I think second gear and there is the best option. Can they get through the chicane? Yes, they can. And they can get up to gear four. Uh, once again, I've forgotten that they don't have brakes. This is the perils of playing multiple dashboards and forgetting which one you've got. It's another loss of gear. They are not doing well in front of the crowds, and that is most definitely my fault. As they cross the line in fourth gear, uh, they get three focus to offset their time, but they are looking quite damaged as we go into the power stage. That might come back to haunt at least two of us. I think the orange car might be on for a surprise victory. The Orange NPC did manage to finish the Super Special in a quicker time than us, but even with a spin there was only 5 seconds difference, 4 minutes 14 to 4 minutes 19, making the total gap as we go into the power stage 41 seconds. All to play for unless you're the green NPC. He'd be much more competitive had I remembered his lack of brakes, and now the lack of gears is likely to result in a guaranteed third place, especially with a current total time of 11 minutes 41 seconds. Who will come away with a good points haul? I wouldn't bet on green, that's for sure. Damage from the last round means we can only make use of four gear dice at a time. So we are going to have to maximize our um, turns uh, as much as we can. Uh, we are also on the leader die no matter where we are on the um, table whether we're first or get overtaken we're still rolling those leader dice we have no focus and i don't want to go flat out to try and get any with a roll like that uh, i want to get as far down the course as i can 
Uh, we've rolled two hazards on our leader dice. Do I want to risk rolling the four? Yes. It's a hazard. I have come to the forest section in gear four. Unfortunately, I have spun out into gear zero, and that will be another two bits of damage as we choke on the last stage. We've got minus one breaks, which is good because we don't have any, and minus one breaks. So we have absolutely got away with that. If we're in gear one in this space, then we want to maximize the use of the track. Uh, if we start there, it'll only put us in third gear, but we'll at least, well, I mean, we could instead go up to fourth. And I think we, at this point, have to maximize our gears. So let's do that. Let's go flat out with those because at this point, what's the worst? Uh, one hazard on the one, we get four focus for our efforts. Will it be enough to keep the orange car behind us? They are going to be rolling six dice and two coast die. That is their dashboard for this uh, stage. They haven't lost control and they get the opportunity to re-roll those dice to make their lives a little easier. Right, we have lots to work with. One two, three, we have to coast and obey the speed limit, four, five, six. They look pretty menacing in our rear view mirror. We're in fourth gear, we have no brakes, so we're going to go a long way around the corner. Um, there is a hairpin all the way down in the distance. So we can get up to gear six towards it. Then we'll have enough time to slow down, and maybe even take the shortcut. That might slow down the orange car as well. We might have to think about that, but first we've got to think about getting there one by one. The three is good. Coast is a hazard. The four is good. Five is good, the six is good. So this coast, which was another hazard, was fine for us. We're in gear six and we await the orange car. What can it do? Uh, it hasn't lost control and it has all of its gears available. It's in gear six, it has no brakes, so it needs to get down to third there, so it has to go five, four, three, it will coast out and it will probably stop in third. It's trying to get all the time back and it's time for the green car. Now the green car does have brakes on um, the gravel thanks to its tyre choice. Uh, will they help it out? We shall soon find out. Uh, it has quite a few dice, so it's going to do much the same as the rest of us. Right, next up is back to us, and I want to make life difficult for the orange car. So to that end, I am going to go through the shortcut and hope for the best. Now. Uh, if I then speed away into the next uh, hairpin, that would make the most of my available dice, except that I'm in the lead and I have damage, which means I don't play that dice. Let's hope for a good shortcut. The five is good. The four is a hazard. The three is good. Two through the shortcut is good. I would like to get a minus one at this stage. We have an okay. So that was no uh, debris flung onto the corner. 
to slow down the orange car, but we carry on with our turn. The coast was good, except that it was the wrong color. And so is that second one. So we have made it through to this space here in gear two. Uh, we've not made it any more difficult for the orange car behind us. They are in gear three. Um, they have not lost control as is expected and they have quite a lot of dice to work with. So um, let's start, we're in gear three. Let's go down to two, uh, coast, coast. Three, do they want to take, they can't break for the corner. So if they want to be in five, they're going to have to rearrange their turn somewhat. So that's what they're going to do. And then the green car at the back has six dice, two coast and a break to work with. They are not losing control. They got a couple of hazards to work their way around. So if they break down to gear two and then coast through, that wouldn't get them very far. So if instead they end in fifth and go through the gears, ready for the corner. Can we pull away towards the finish? I certainly hope so. We're in gear two. We're gonna to drop to first gear for the hairpin and we're going to get through. I'm not gonna be able to get up to a high gear unless I uh, do something like that, I mean four is not a high gear, but if I can finish on this turn, I would prefer it. Uh, so let's roll these. Um, oof. You can hear me say flat out, but I'm going to roll one by one. Uh, now the coast die are blank. Thank you very much, lads. Uh, in fact, we could have gone flat out. As it happens, it just puts us over the line in fourth gear. Have we done enough to keep the orange car behind us. Let's find out. Let's see how they navigate the hairpin. Uh, they don't have a break, my mistake. Uh, they are re-rolling that, so they have lots of dice to work with. Uh, they're in fifth gear, so they need to go down to fourth, down to third. Uh, in fact, if they go or in the long space, they can then coast around the outside in third. Um, they could then go for distance, but that would mean that their time um, is increased. So we're gonna try not to do that. The other way they could do this is to go through the shortcut. That would get them distance as well. I think that they are going to risk that in an attempt to get to the finish line as fast as they can. That was a minus one coast die. The green car gets a chance to make it towards that corner. Um, it would help if I moved the car to where it actually is. Uh, and then we can see how much further through the course it can get. Uh, we are going to re-roll some of those dice. And unfortunately, breaking down to third gear was two of its three hazards for this uh, turn, but it can get all the way up to fifth gear before it has to come to a stop. Now it is the orange car with one fewer Coast die available to it. That shortcut has caused it quite the problem. Uh, the best it can do is get into third gear by using the sliding spaces. 
that uh, trip through the shortcut has cost it. Will it make up time on its last turn? Green car is rolling a handful of dice. Uh, it is not losing control, although it's not got a lot to work with. I think the best course of action for it is to slow down. Um, it goes into two and is the only car to respect the actual stage limits rather than cut through the middle of it. Right, the orange car has coast eye damage and it's trying to get over the finish line. It is in third gear. It can drop down to second gear. Uh, however, it has absolutely ruined its chances. That is as far as it can get. That was probably my fault, my subconscious, thinking it could do better, but with one fewer coast die, it absolutely couldn't. As it gets stuck in the corners, makes the wrong decisions at the wrong times. Right, the green car to try and catch up. Uh, it hasn't lost control and it doesn't have a lot to work with, but it's in gear two. Uh, it can drop to one to obey the speed limit. Unlike the orange car, it can get up through the gears to gear four and use its brake die on the next turn to put it around the corner. It has caught sight of the orange car as the orange NPC tries to cross the line, uh, which I'm sure it can do on this turn. Um, it will be in gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five. Has it done enough on the stopwatch? We shall soon find out. Before then, we've got to see if the green car can finish on this turn as well. Uh, it hasn't lost control, but does it have the dice to work with? And it needs to drop to second um, in order to get around the corner. So that is its first hazard on the coast. Third, fourth, over the line in fifth. We are going to have a look at the times and see who has won our Rally Australia. Despite a strong power stage time of 1 minute 57, the green NPC ends the day with a total time of 13 minutes and 38 seconds, securing third place as we all could have guessed. Our opening crash was not as problematic as the poor decisions made towards the end of the orange NPC's run as we managed to pull out a 55 second lead with a final time of just over 10 minutes. If we were playing a championship we'd take home 25 points for an overall first place finish, orange with 18 and green with 15 points, but with the power stage to shake things up the green NPC comes away with 20 points in total, orange just ahead with 21 and we still lead with 29. We might want to alter the amount of points the power stage gives depending on how many cars are racing or how long our championship is, but I hope it has given you something to think about when it comes to your own rallies. Shake things up once in a while and I'll catch you next time.